can kind of add some subtle variation to this by changing the octaves of our A110. So I'm just going to switch up one octave. Then we're also getting some kind of like uh, abnormal clicking. I don't really like that. So let's go back to our middle octave. There we go. And uh, let's bring that down one octave and see what results we get. Oh, and just remembered, um, also in the in the discussion of the patch out there, there was also a uh, little talking about the uh, pulse width of our VCO coming into play as well. So let's actually try and adjust that parameter and see what we get. to the other octave I was in. Now let me try and play with the pulse width a little. Okay. So we're kind of back to where we were a little while ago. So we're doing great. Let's kind of keep moving a little to the right. So now we're going to go back to the PLL, and let me just kind of bring back my low pass filter back about where it was before. I like that because it's almost creating like a pseudo kick drum as it's going into the slew limiter and then back and then forward and all that. So pretty interesting stuff. Um, one thing I should mention, because you're probably wondering this, is like, well, what is all of this doing? Um, in essence, it's uh, sort of the phase lock loop here, tracking, you know, because we have it uh, patched in here, this VCO, but then in return, it's actually being tracked, going in the other direction. So it's kind of a track of a track and so it kind of slips and slides all over the place. Um, it's a very interesting sound altogether. I've enjoyed this very much. Uh, so as we're here in the A196, I remember that we can kind of change a lot of the settings here. So let's actually jump right in and do some of that. So I'm going to just offset a little bit. There we go. That's a nice one. So that's offset adjustment. Let's try switching the octave range. I'm not entirely sure what this is going to do, but let's just jump right in. Pretty interesting. Although now our patch is sort of at a standstill. Let's maybe adjust offset and see if we can get something. So it's coming in and out of the melody. Kind of an interesting sound. So, not quite as responsive in the mid-range. Right there at the top of the mid-range, it's actually in the high range, so now we know. High range is actually a little more responsive. And bring offset back to about normal. Let's flip over to the low range just to hear what we got over there. And I didn't really expect much there, but let's try and bring offset up a little bit. More kind of a bell-like tone. Let me try adjusting the octave of the A110 and see if we get any more results. It's more a static tone than anything else. Okay, so that's the low one. Not a big fan of that one. Let's flip over back into mid-range. There we go. Okay, doing great. Let's continue and maybe try one of the other phase comparators. If I remember correctly, there's going to be some pretty strange results jumping over into phase comparator 3, so let's do that. Actually, it's a little more subtle in this, this time around. I'll bring the offset back down.
Still kind of a neat sound. I'm going to try playing with the level of CV over here at the same time. Just slew time. Not hearing a lot. Let me just pulse with. This is just slow pass a little bit. Go back into mid. Yeah, that's about what I expected in that octave, or that comparator, I should say. Let's go back to two. It's a nice little musical version again. Slip over to one. See if we can get some interesting results out of this. Adjust the low pass over here a little bit. Right there, that's my ring mod that I'm bringing up right there. So let's try bringing up the filter a little bit. Filtered version. It's kind of a nice little effect. Bring up the gain of our CVs a little bit. Interesting in its own right. Let's just bring low pass all the way down. So as you can see, there are a lot of little fun places that you can adjust this guy. change the subtlety of the patch for whatever you're doing. Let's see if I can get out of those clicks a little bit. There we go. Back on the slew limiter adjusting. And so there you have it. That is the Doug CL PLL Arabesque patch. Uh, variation of that. Um, if you are interested more on the uh, on the patch itself, like you want to see the original version of this patch, um, it is out there. Uh, now I spoke about um, the link that I'm about to give you uh, a little bit earlier in one of the other segments. Um, there's a website called Momonu Labs. I think I'm saying it correctly. Uh, so if you do a Google search for M M Mamonu Labs and PLL Lecture, you should be able to find the page that not only has the PLL uh, Phase Lock Loop Lecture uh, by someone else who's much more informed than I am on this subject uh, of Phase Lock Loops, and uh, there's also a little portion of the top section that has an illustration of the original Doug CL patch. Um, I also do encourage you to go out there on the web and find the video and listen to it over and over again because it's awesome. Um, so that about does it for this particular segment. Um, I'm not entirely sure what we're going to do in the next segment of the phase lock loop uh, experiments here. Uh, but whatever it is, uh, I'm sure it will be uh, memorable. Um, we are kind of coming close to the end of this series. Uh, we're not quite there, but we will be there fairly shortly. Um, we may be looking at a different patch next time around, or we may just be kind of concluding with some final thoughts. So thanks very much for watching. This was a great episode. I got a lot out of it, and it was very fun. So keep on patching out there. 